Hello, um, your excellencies, distinguished delegates, and dear colleagues, welcome to the COP27 event titled Tobacco Consumption as an Environmental Sustainability Issue, uh, Environmental Impact of Tobacco Products, and Proposed Solutions that Complement the Solutions for its Negative Health Effects. Organized by the Turkish Green Crescent Society with the invaluable support of the Ministry of Environment, Urbanization and Climate Change of Turkey. Thank you very much. Uh, we would also like to thank the Secretariat of the World Health Organization Framework Convention on Tobacco Control and African Tobacco Control Alliance. Uh, we're truly delighted to be here on this session with you all. Uh, my name is Zeynep Temel. I work as an expert at the advocacy department of the Turkish Green Crescent Society and will be moderating this side event. Thank you again for joining us. And now, please let me introduce our speakers. Uh, today, we have distinguished speakers and presenters with us. I would like to introduce them. Uh, they will talk about the environmental impact of tobacco products from different perspectives while suggesting potential solutions that also complement the public health solutions. And to start our event, uh, I kindly invite Mr. Yasin Erol, Deputy Secretary, of, uh, Deputy Secretary General of the Turkish Green Crescent Society, to give his presentation. Uh, Mr. Erol, the floor is yours. Hello, my name is Yasin Erol. I want to thank first our United Nations Climate Change Summit team and, and our ministry officers as well. And thanks very much for invitation. And in my presentation, I will talk about harms of cigarette smoke on air quality and health. In order, all the topics in this presentation will be as follows, which is health effects of second-hand tobacco smoke, environmental impacts of the particulate matter, background information on the national and international legal landscape of second-hand tobacco, the air quality monitoring study, and I'll give you study markups. In scientific researches, we see that smoke includes various harms, both in terms of health and the environment. However, mostly people ignore the harm of cigarette smoke for an environment. Impact of smoking on air quality and its effects on ambient and indoor air pollution and climate change to be shown through the results of air quality monitoring study conducted by the Turkish Green Crescent Society. In air quality monitoring study conducted by Turkish Green Crescent Society in Istanbul between October 2019 and January 2020, Particulate matter produced by cigarette smoke in indoor smoking areas was examined. And both the negative health and environment effects of tobacco consumption quantified and evidence for the need to study tobacco control as a global and planetary issue strength. And what are the health effects of the smoke? When cigarette smoke was examined, it was seen that the same chemicals in content of paint remover, toilet cleaner, rat poison, pesticide, and exhaust smoke were determined. And this deadly mixture includes over 250 toxic or cancer-causing chemicals that cause a wide range of immediate and long-term health effects.
And it has seen that smoking increases the risk of lung cancer, cardiovascular problems, and stroke, the respiratory diseases, sudden infant deaths, upper respiratory and ear infections, and asthma in children as well. What is the environmental effect of particulate matter? And particulate matter pollution causes significant change in climate and weather conditions causing acidification of the ocean and decreased rain quality in medium and long term and global drought begins. And Particulate matter pollution contributes to the greenhouse gas effect worsening climate change. It prevents heat from leaving the planet, leading to the melting of the polar ice caps and the sea levels to rise. The oceans acidify due to carbon dioxide particulates, which also harm sea life. PM 2.5, an important cause of reduced visibility and creation of haze, degrading visibility in many cities and nature areas. Now, let's have a look at the national and international legal infrastructure of tobacco smog. 181 countries representing approximately 90% of the world population have ratified Article 8 of the World Health Organization Framework Convention on Tobacco Control, which is FCTC, and have undertaken the legal obligations which is came through by this convention. Turkey firstly enacted the law on the prevention of the harms of tobacco products, which is law number is 4207, in 1996, and after that, nine years later, became a party of the, this framework agreement, which is FCTC, on 31st of March in 2005. And after that, with the regulations it made in 2008 and 2009, the smoking ban in both public and indoor areas was banned in restaurants, and it also included other commercial regions belong to provide entities. And in this part, I want to give some more details about our air quality monitoring study. Between October 2009 and January 2020, Turkish Green Crescent Society conducted an air quality monitoring study across Istanbul, Turkey, as part of the campaign for tobacco-free kids. Our main aim in this study was to compare the air quality in smoking and non-smoking areas. In this context, studies were carried out to examine the air quality in 29 restaurants and coffee shops. And data uh, among these 29 locations, smoking was observed in 19 venues and smoking wasn't observed in 10 venues. Data collectors spent at least 30 minutes in each venue and recorded the dimensions of the venue and any other possible sources of air pollution. The number of people inside the venue and the number of tobacco products being consumed recorded every 15 minutes. The PM 2.5 levels were measured and recorded continuously for at least 30 minutes. All of these studies were evaluated using the following two sets of globally recognized criteria, which is World Health Organization's target guideline and the second one is Air Quality Index, developed by the United States Environment Protection Agency, which is EPA. What was the study markups with, uh, in this program? We have seen that in smoking places, levels of PM 2.5 is at 414 cubic meter, but in non-smoking areas, this level drops down to 97 
cubic meter, which is much more closest to the healthy air average. And we learned that tobacco smoking also affects air pollution through particles in the air. As we can see statistically, the level of harmful particles in smoking areas and the levels of harmful particles in smoking areas are dramatically different from each other. And as a result, we know very well that cigarette smoke is among the main causes of unhealthy and hazardous, dangerous air levels. And it, in this context, it has to be accepted as a global problem. And, it, and in this context, it is extremely important to take urgent action with exclusionary sanctions. Thank you. Uh, we present our sincere thank you to Mr. Erol. Thank you very much. And now Mr. Leons Diodon Sesu, Executive General of the African Tobacco Control Alliance, will give his presentation. Uh, the floor is yours, sir, Mr. Sesu. Thank you, Madam Chair. First of all, uh, allow me to congratulate the government of Turkey for organizing this uh, event and uh, extending my thanks to Green Crescent, our partner, and also recognize here the WFCTC Secretariat collaborating in this side event. I'm going to share with you on the impact of tobacco cultivation on the environment, uh, specifically what we see as uh, deforestation, biodiversity loss, and uh, food insecurity around the globe. We have uh, the opportunity with uh, what we are seeing today in terms of tobacco use, uh, that uh, we have uh, a treaty that is, uh, as uh, Mr. Yassin just said, we have this treaty on uh, tobacco control, which uh, is uh, ratified by more than 180 countries uh, around the globe. Tobacco growing is uh, really affecting our planet, and uh, this tobacco is uh, a plant that is uh, uh, started uh, the plantation, you know, where that we see is from the Americas, and it was, uh, first of all, it grew widely, while because of the narcotic uh, effect uh, in the plant, it has been going today commercially. We can see the commercial growth of tobacco around the world and uh, not just growing tobacco, but uh, going through all the life cycle in terms of uh, curing, uh, manufacturing and getting products, various products as we can see here. Cigarettes, of course, well known, but we have today many other products uh, from this uh, plant. And we, in terms of growing around the globe, we can see that uh, uh, we have uh, the leading tobacco producing countries here. We can see that we have China, we have uh, India and Brazil, and 90% uh, of tobacco, the production of tobacco is uh, in uh, the low and middle income countries. This is uh, raising the problem we are talking today in terms of the impact of, of the environment. As we can see that these three leading countries, uh, or even if we consider the low and middle income countries, they use a huge part of the land that we all we are sharing here. And the life cycle of the tobacco as we can see from here, from the cultivation. Of course, we are going to talk more about the cultivation and the curing and the, the primary processing, but the life cycle goes to manufacturing, to the cigarette, uh, uh, the 
distribution of the tobacco products, but also we have the disposal. So of, at all level, at all stages here, we have waste. We have effect on our environment. Let's uh, briefly talk about uh, the harmful consequences uh, that we have. But I'm telling you that at all level here, we have harmful consequences on our planet, uh, our home for us all. In terms of, um, on this slide, you can see at production, cultivation level, you see at current level where we have today 5% deforestation caused around the world is from tobacco production. You can also see the effect on our sea, the marine pollution. Mr. Yassin talked about the air pollution. Let's move quickly, see on the three aspects of the first three stages in the life cycle, what do we see? First of all, in terms of deforestation, soil effect on our soil, we can see clearly that uh, to produce tobacco, we need land. And this is uh, key to know that uh, at production level, since this plant is a mono crop, they need to destroy the, 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 the trees but also they need to destroy the, 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 the trees to cure tobacco. So this uh, is a necessity that uh, tobacco growers, they will feel that they need land and then they need to, to, to kill all, all the, 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 the trees on the land. This leads to 5% of global deforestation, as I was saying, but also just some figures again here. You can imagine, Im imagine that 200 hectares, 200,000 hectares each year are cleared to produce tobacco, to cultivate tobacco. And approximately, when you see 30, when we have 300 cigarettes, imagine that to produce 300 cigarettes, they need to kill one tree. You can see there on the picture, killing trees in a country where we have from Tanzania in Africa, they need to kill. And you can see the land. There is no more tree there. You can see a journalist sitting there. So the loss of tree leaves what? It leaves to, to the erosion of the soil. So we have a depletion and the soil is now empty. There is erosion. The curing at this level, again, they need woods. So this is another reason to kill and then to cut the, 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 the trees, to cure tobacco leaves. At this level, you can see uh, a quote from someone in the region of Tabura, that is uh, in the city of uh, Kaliw Kaliwa, saying that they need to decimate, like uh, you see the number, the, 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 the surface that they need to decimate. In that area, that in that city, they are killing the land. They are killing, they are killing the, the land, and this is leading to really, really food insecurity, poverty, and biodiversity loss. Let's see the effect on the biodiversity. Quickly, this is um, just to say that tobacco production is resource intensive. It requires so many things from the land, but also, since this, as I was saying, is a monocrop, there is a need to really put more fertilizer, pesticide, and herbicide. This means that there is no way that we can grow another crop when you are growing tobacco. So with the community around the world, remember our second slide there, that those communities, they suffer from food. They don't have food. They lack food because they are focused on a monocrop that is uh, tobacco going commercially. But what do they receive at the end is uh, that the land is no more fertile. So the large amount of fertilizer that they use kill the soil, but also kill all nutrients that we can have from the soil. That's the loss, that's the loss we are having on the bad, in the biodiversity aspect. The nutrients that will be available for the soil, they are all killed in this way. And water. Water is key for our food. The water is key for us to produce food. Water is key for our lands. Imagine that to produce every year, 
they, we, they, they need water, and the amount of water used is, a, is a more than 20,000 billion of tons of water used in tobacco growing. This, I put some uh, examples here. You can imagine that uh, a swimming pool, Olympic swimming pool, is equivalent to 15,000, 15 million of uh, uh, equivalent to, 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 to this uh, uh, 15 million of Olympic pool. This is really, really something. Imagine one day in the Amazon uh, 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 River, the flow of water in one day. That is what is used to produce tobacco. And we have a concern here that I want to share with you that will take us to, to really take action. Is that there is a report from the WHO World Health Organization that as a means kind of alternative, you know, that we have to the tobacco growing. And it was noted that globally, the land used for tobacco growing, of course, even if it is less than 1%, someone here can say, yes, it's less than 1%, but let's see the effect we are having. The impact here globally is that we have around 2.2 to 4% of the lands that we are killing. And this, of course, is having a negative effect on the climate. We are seeing the climate change today. And also, lastly, is uh, the environmental laws that we have. They are weak. They are weak. We remember we shared about uh, the air pollution. We shared about uh, so many other issues in this uh, uh, conference of parties. And we need to really put more effort in having some uh, uh, um, good laws to protect our environment, protect our uh, our nature. It means that we all need to take uh, control of this situation. Thank you very much, and uh, I will lead my I will leave my my colleague here to really take uh, us through some of the possibilities we have in taking control of this issue. Thank you. Thank you. We thank you very much, Mr. Thistle. Uh, our third and final speaker is Mr. Calvin Ko Chuang Heng, Program Manager at the Secretariat of the WHO Framework Convention on Tobacco Control. Mr. Uh, Ko, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you so much. And firstly, I want to express my gratitude to the government of Turkey for organizing this side event here at COP27 and to our partners, the Turkish Green Crescent Society and the African Tobacco Control Alliance for shedding some light on this important issue. So I'm just gonna follow on from the two presentations and talk a little bit about tobacco product waste and offer some proposed solutions. Um, let's see. Oh, it's upside down, wonderful. Thank you. So I think the previous speaker already mentioned, um, I come from the Secretariat of the WHO Framework Convention on Tobacco Control. So we came into force in 2005. Uh, we are 11 years uh, younger than the um, Climate Change Convention. And we have 182 parties um, covering 90% of the world's population. And we work uh, based in Geneva and we are hosted by the World Health Organization. So why are we here? Why, why is the tobacco control people here in a climate change conference? So we're here to shed some light on the fact that tobacco impacts the environment and tobacco also has some repercussions on climate change. This is a study done by one of our, um, our research colleagues from the Imperial College of London um, that it shows the annual contribution to climate change of the global cigarettes smoking supply chain. So this is what um, our previous speaker had talked about the life cycle of tobacco from cultivation to manufacture to consumer to disposal. All of it has an impact on CO2 emissions, for example. It releases a year 84 million tons of carbon dioxide. Where does that go? To our earth. Here, also from the Imperial College study, you can see the environmental impacts on the lifetime of smoking for one person, smoking an average of 20 cigarettes a day for 50 years, that's how much water gets lost, that's how much land is used, how much greenhouse gas is emitted, and fossil depletion as well. So um, I invite you to look at this report uh, on our website. Uh, you can find a lot more details um, that talk about 
strengthening the link between tobacco and climate change. Now, the issue of cigarette butts pollution. Um, six trillion cigarettes are smoked a year, and out of that, four and a half trillion are improperly disposed. So meaning they're discarded on the streets, on our water systems, in oceans, and they find themselves to be the most littered item on earth. Even as you walk around outside this venue, as well, I'm sure you'll find cigarette butts um, on the streets. So what we've done this year, um, the Secretariat worked with the United Nations Environment Program of UNEP, and we joined their Clean Seas campaign. And this was a campaign that was trying to shed light on hidden plastics. So plastics that you find in cosmetics, in textiles, in fashion, um, and also in cigarette butts, because very few people know that cigarette filters in cigarette butts contain cellulose acetate, which is a plastic, and it doesn't degrade, and it's really harmful to the ocean life and marine life as well. So I invite you to also check out our campaign materials on our website. Um, there's lots and lots here, you can see. And really, it was uh, the first time we, we collaborated with UNEP, um, um, and they approached us, and we really uh, had a very, very successful collaboration with them to raise awareness on this issue. Now, the issue of also the cost of tobacco product waste. Um, there's a table that you can see on the right there that shows how much it's costing countries because who's ultimately paying for cleaning up the mess? It's not the companies, it's the government. And it's the taxpayers who have to foot the bill for cleaning up all this litter that is just choking the earth and choking our oceans. Now, the issue of extended producer responsibility. This is what we call the one who pollutes pays. So this is a concept that came out of Sweden from a master's degree student. Um, and it basically um, is trying to show the point that the, 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 the entity that is responsible for causing the damage and causing the harm should be the one that we held accountable to and responsible for paying the cost of this mess and this um, cleanup. So an example of what some countries are doing, uh, what we call environmental tax. Um, a couple of countries in uh, um, Africa have already in, in, in imposed this tax on, on tobacco products, on cigarettes, um, where they've uh, increased um, the price. And this environment tax is meant to help with the um, cleanup costs um, that, that, are, that, that is uh, caused by all these uh, wasteful discharge. The European Union recently also, um, as part of their directive, have put in labels onto cigarette packs, um, onto cigarettes, but to say that these contain plastic. So this, the, e, the EU is trying to do a lot for, for um, uh, plastics reductions in the region. So this is one very exciting um, policy measure that we hope other countries will also replicate. Now the issue of green washing. I mean, the environment community knows this term very, very well. For us in tobacco, um, it's quite of a new, a new term, but it's really, the, the companies trying to greenwash themselves, so meaning to show that they are actually very sustainable, very green, doing very, very well in the world in terms of environmental, social, and governance um, index ratings. But in actual fact, what are they covering up and what are they hiding up? They are hiding the fact that they are producing a product that kills two out of three people who use it. They are funding and producing a product that is causing all this environmental damage, as was already mentioned by my previous speakers. They do a lot of um, campaigns such as cleaning up beaches, funding environmental disaster relief. You can see that the tobacco industry was very active during the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, this was an opportunity for them to get into the whole scene and appear to be the good guys, when in actual fact, they are just what we call greenwashing again. So this kind of activity gives the impression that the industry is socially responsible, yet they are causing us an incalculable toll on human health, and now as we are learning, also on the environment. So some of the um, measures that uh, um, governments and ministries can do besides the um, extended producer responsibility measure, now with that measure, you've got to be careful because anytime you involve the tobacco industry, this is an opportunity for them to get into the room, get into the space, get really comfortable with governments, this is where the FCTC convention has an article 5.3 that provides safeguards to say that, look, the tobacco industry is not allowed, not welcome in any sort of public health policy making because we are just tired of the industry constantly lobbying for weakened laws, weakened regulations that support them. Ultimately, they are for profit. Um, for those of us working in health, um, in development, 
we are for something bigger and something greater. So governments, I think, uh, need to be also be aware of that um, when they uh, invite the industry to be part of the solution. They are not really. It's more about holding them accountable and exposing their tactics and letting them pay up for the mess that they are causing. So some of the other measures um, that I've highlighted there um, from this report that you can also get and see from the WHO website includes, um, well, for example, banning cigarette filters. Um, if, if that single-use plastic, it has no health um, benefits, why are we even having them? The, the, the industry has hijacked this filters issue and marketed filtered cigarettes as a healthier option when in actual fact it does nothing. Now it just pollutes the oceans and kills our fishes. So ban it, that's one way to do it. Implement the um, convention, very important. Um, as, as the first speaker talked about um, 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 smoke-free and, and air quality. Also supporting tobacco farmers to switch. We have an article in the convention that talks about letting farmers switch from growing tobacco to growing other more sustainable crops. We need food, we need crops that have value. We don't need crops like tobacco that have no intrinsic value except you know, for the smokers themselves and also for profits for the companies. So a, a couple of slides just to uh, segue a little bit into a very important measure uh, regarding tobacco taxes. I mean, this is one very important policy measure that contains in the convention. Um, um, raising tobacco tax is one of the most feared measure of the industry. Um, every time a government is threatening to raise tobacco taxes, the tobacco industry will go up in arms and they will just make a lot of noise and try to stop it. The graph on the right shows you that there's still a lot of room to go. The best practice measure for taxes is that for the price of the cigarette packs, at least 75% should be taxed. Right now we see in lower middle income countries, that number is far lower than that. In higher income countries, it's closer to 75, but still we have a long way to go um, to make this a very effective measure. Health taxes is also very good for building back better uh, as we are coming out of the pandemic. Um, you get revenue for the governments, you reduce the health impacts of smoking by making cigarettes more expensive and inaccessible to the poor and to the young. And so it's a very, very um, progressive uh, measure. Um, just a slide on um, tobacco-free finance. I mentioned the, um, the organizers wanted me to talk about that. Um, this is an NGO um, based out of Australia called the Tobacco-Free Portfolios. Now, there's this huge push right now to get companies to divest away from investing in tobacco stocks and in tobacco companies. So I invite you to look into, this, into this, uh, what this group is doing. And they're really um, encouraging and mobilizing a lot of big corporations, CEOs from big companies, especially pension funds, um, superannuations, to show that you know, there's no sense, no value um, in fighting against tobacco, but then at the same time, financing and investing in it. So we need to be coherent, we need to be consistent with our actions, and tobacco-free finance is, uh, is, uh, is a good way to do it. Just to end with a couple of quotes, uh, one from the uh, WHO Director General, Dr. Tedros, at the last uh, WHA in 2020. The pandemic is a reminder of the intimate and delicate relationship between people and planet. Any efforts to make our world safer are doomed to fail unless they address the critical interface between people and pathogens and the existential threat of climate change that is making our Earth less habitable. Right now, we're seeing all these big issues coming together. Climate change, pandemics, tobacco. We all need to find that nexus. We all need to find that point of synergy where we can work together and leverage on each other and help make the world a better and safer place. This is the head of the Secretariat of the FCTC, I mean Geneva, and here also she reiterates the point that you know this is this is a, a there's never been a better time to encourage people and citizens to quit smoking. Governments can do a lot to help uh, with that, and also to make sure that we protect um, our health policies from the interference of the tobacco industry. So here are some contact details. I uh, welcome you to reach out to me um, and um, for any further information. Thank you so much. Thank you. We thank you very much, Mr. Paul. And with this presentation, we end this COP27 event titled Tobacco Consumption as an Environmental Sustainability Issue, Environmental Impact of Tobacco Products, and Proposed Solutions that Complement the Solutions for its Negative Health Effects. Uh, but before closing, I'll leave the floor to our panelists if they have any final remarks. It works, yeah. And to 
be honest with you, I just thank you to organize this very special program. And you know, the air condition is very important for climate change. And that's why, as a Green Crescent, we, we, we thought, you know, we do uh, in our best, you know, in Turkey and, and all around the world as well, because, because uh, Confederation as well, we just we work all together with the 81 countries. That's why it was a very private, very special program for myself to explain our own uh, average, our own positions, actually. Thank you. Well, thank you, Madam Director. We have this uh, great opportunity to uh, raise this issue, you know, in this uh, COP27. Uh, talking about uh, climate change uh, and uh, tobacco production, uh, we can see the consequences, uh, let's say, harmful effect that we are having on our planet. Uh, I'm glad that uh, the Turkish government, uh, uh, as a party to the uh, convention, as the World Health uh, uh, <coughs> Tobacco Control, the framework uh, for tobacco control, uh, as party, has uh, really put this uh, at that uh, high level and uh, invested uh, effort in it uh, to get it uh, at uh, this uh, uh, COP27. I want to encourage uh, other parties uh, to follow this uh, great example that uh, when we have these uh, um, gatherings, we have more discussion about uh, uh, tobacco control. Uh, from Africa, we know that we are still having the effect of uh, tobacco uh, growing and tobacco use, we really want uh, uh, the solutions uh, to be implemented and we want to call on all governments uh, to really uh, push, put more effort uh, in, in this. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you for having me here. Um, just to reiterate the point that tobacco is a development issue, um, it's not only a health issue, um, it's very important to realize that in order to make some impact on reducing tobacco, we need to work across sectors. So we're so happy that we're here amongst the environment community. Um, it's a new uh, space for us. Um, I think it's the beginning of something longer term. Uh, we hope that we will be more present as well. And we thank you for the government of Turkey and to Turkey Green Crescent for giving us the opportunity um, tobacco control is such a critical pillar for the SDGs. Uh, we have a target 3.8, which talks about implementing the convention. Um, it's, it's something that we need to raise more awareness about, work across sectors, uh, have more multi-sectoral collaboration, and countries like Turkey can lead the way in showing how this can be done. So I thank you for your attention, and I hope that uh, you will help us to spread the word and uh, help, uh, uh, help us achieve a tobacco-free world for the younger generations. Thank you. I just want to mention that uh, we shared the document. There is a document that uh, was uh, distributed. Uh, as uh, you mentioned, that uh, who pays for the mess that is created? Uh, we have a fact sheet uh, that uh, we distributed, uh, raising the, the bringing the solution. As you said, we need to make big tobacco pays for this, for the climate, for the mess on the climate. Uh, so the climate finance is uh, possible. So there is a fact sheet that we share. And please read this fact sheet and uh, we need your support at uh, this uh, event and uh, at next COP, we will meet and advocate again for that. That's why I'm here today as uh, advocate for our world. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for all of your uh, really great elaborate insights and presentation. And uh, thank you once again. And as the Turkish Green Crescent Society, I'd like to also reiterate the importance of viewing tobacco products from a cross-cutting point of view, as they have many implications for both public health and climate change. And if our speakers have no ad, I'm right now closing this event. Thank you.